Hi everyone, my name is Ismail Qasim. Today I'll be going over my project that I worked with Mr. Peterson. So uh, let me show you my project. So this is my project, it's called this. And what this is, is a map that is used to display data. So let me let me show you what I mean. So if we go over here, uh, you can see my map. So this map is a map of Minnesota and it has these markers. And each of these markers, they are different colors. So what each marker represents is a city. And if I click on it, I will see the city name, the zip code, and the number of people living there. So I'm, I have a key here. And what this key is, 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 is used to show the amount of people living. And I wanted there was a split it into categories. So I have 1,000 to 10,000 people. Uh, that, that, that's a great key. 10,000 to 20,000 is yellow, and so on. So the first thing I did to get this project started is to go to Mapbox. So here, this is the website. It's called Mapbox, and this is what I'm using to make the website, to make the map uh, appear. So what do you first do is you create your account. Once you create your account, then after that, they ask you, do you want to use this map for websites? Uh, mobile or Unity. So for me, I wanted to use it for website. So I clicked web. After this, they give you an option. Do you want to use HTML or you want to use NPM? I I went with HTML. So this will just be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. After that, uh, they say uh, you need to copy this. So this will go into your HTML file. And if I click next again, I will get a JavaScript code that I need to copy. And that code has my key, so I will, so I will skip that part. So now let's go to my code. So this is my code. So the first thing I needed when starting this project was data points. So my uh, my project it included the city of Minnesota and all all the cities in it. So I needed a, a data that has the city, the names of it, uh, the longitude, the latitude the amount of people living there and so on. So Mr. Peterson was trying enough to give me this data. So he gave me a CV, CVC file and this has all the data that I need. So what I did was I converted this file to a JSON file and here it is. So why JSON file? This is the JSON file and as you can see it's a lot more readable. So I don't know if you know much about JSON but in a JSON file this uh, curly bracket it's an object. And this square bracket is an array. So it's an array of objects. So that's what uh, it is. And this is helpful to know because once uh, I needed to go through this JSON and get my data points. So that's what I did. I used fetch. This is a JavaScript uh, function. And I fetch my JSON and it gives me back my data. So this data is going to be a, an array of objects. And down here, I walked through the array. So I started at zero. For now, you can see it's 50, but that's not all my data. My data, I believe it was about 500 cities, but for clarity, I made it smaller so you can you can see it. So let's go back. So what I did is I, I walked through the array. I did my longitude, my latitude, my population, the, the, city of the, the name of the city, and the zip. So why, why, why will I need the longitude and the latitude? Let's go back to the map. As you can see, these markers, they are in different spots. And the reason for this is, it is at the spot where the city is located, its longitude and its latitude. So if I, for example, let's, let's maybe zoom to one of these points and see exactly what city it's at. So this city, this marker I mean, it's at the city uh, 8, 18, I believe. So it needs to be at the spot where the city is located and we need longitude and latitude to figure, to know where, where the city is located. So let's go back to the code. So after that, uh, what I did was I checked if the population is greater than or equals to limit. So what is what is this limit? What, what is this limit for? Well, one problem I had when I was working on this project was there was way too many cities. I had a lot of cities, and my map was kind of cluster. 
So what I did was I made a threshold, and the threshold is 1,000. So if there's any city that's less than 1,000, it will not be included in the map. And there, was a, there were a lot of cities that were like 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, people. So I, any city less than 1,000 will be excluded. After this, I just I just got my city name, my zip code, and my population. I just put that in a string variable. And after that, I create a marker. So this is part of Mapbox. I create a marker. And what I did was to get the color of the marker, I used the population. So I used this function, get population size, and I pass in my population. So let's go up top and see what this does. So get population size, it takes the size of the parameter, and we I check if this if the if it's less if it's less than ten thousand, if it's ten thousand or less, it's gonna be gray, twenty thousand or less it's gonna be yellow, and so on. So the size determines what color the marker will be. After that I create a pop-up. So what is a pop-up? Uh, let's go back to the project. When, whenever I click on these markers, something something pops up, something shows up, right? Attached. So this is the pop-up that is shown. So for this pop-up, I pass in the description. So the description is just my city name, my zip code, my population. I just put that in the string. I just uh, combine them. And I just, uh, in the pop-up, I just put that in there. And after that, I add that to the map. After this, I need, I need to load my map. So I created my map. I added my data points. Now I need to load it. And what I in order to load it, I need my key. So this is the key they gave me, and this key I put it in another file. So that's one thing to uh, watch out for. Whenever you work with API keys, make sure to put your key somewhere safe, somewhere no one can see it, because you don't it's uh because you don't want other people to use it, misuse it, and so on. So I put that in another file, and then I, I just called my my variable. Now after this. I center my map and I put a max bounds. So what does this mean? Center and max bounds. Well, let's go back. Whenever I load my map, it, it, it always goes to here. So this is the center. So to center, I just use uh, the, the longitude and latitude of Minnesota. So whenever I load my map, it just, this is where it is. It does not jump to another part of the world. And max bounds, whenever I, I cannot uh, get out of this area, so my bounds is just within this area, and this is useful if you want to just display a certain part of something. Just, uh, so for me, I, I was just interested in Minnesota, so what I did was I just bound it to Minnesota. Now after this, I just added nav navigation control, and that is whenever that is this, so I can zoom in and zoom out, and this is useful for user friendly to make it easier. After that, I also I also added a I also added like a polygon shape around my state. So this polygon shape that's covering the entire state was not part of Mapbox. I needed to do that manually and in order to do this I needed to know all the coordinates that surround Minnesota. And this is other coordinates. Let me just show you how many they are. As you can see, it's a lot of coordinates, and, and the ship's going all the way down. So I get this information from my website, and I just, and this is part, this uh, is part of the map box, but this coordinates I needed to get for my state. After that, uh, after that, I, what I, uh, another thing that I had trouble with was the zip code. So, and so the the file I had there were so some cities they had zip codes that were more than one, and if there's more than one, it's going to be a string, and if it's just one zip code, it's going to be a number. So there I was working with two different data types, and this was uh, kind of troubling me because uh, there will be like what, a city that had like five six zip codes, and it was it was kind of it was just all over the place. So what I did was. I wanted to just have one zip code. Even if it's more than one zip code, I'm just going to have one zip code. So I checked the, the type of the zip. It was a number. I just returned it because it's just one zip code. I know it's only one zip code. But if it's not a number, that means it is a string. So I just get the first five characters 
and I add this plus sign to indicate there's multiple zip codes. So that is about all. Uh, I hope you learned something new today and have a good day.